be wondering, how do artists explore? Well, we experiment with new materials and techniques before we use them, like these golden paints and mediums and Lumiere paints. Let's begin by seeing what is inside our Acrylic Explorer set. So we have an assortment of acrylic mediums. We also have heavy body acrylics as well as open acrylics, which are have a little bit more fluidity to them, a little more working time, as well as fluid and high flow acrylics, which are new to me. So we'll be experimenting with all of those. We'll also be using some heavy molding paste that I already had, as well as some of these Lumiere metallic and pearlescent colors, which I really like. Our substrate that we'll be experimenting on is a piece of mat board cut to the size of a artist trading card or two and a half by three and a half. And we're going to begin with one of the mediums that was in the kit, which is a light molding paste. And we'll see what kind of effects we can get with that, mixing it with the open uh, acrylic paint and just kind of building up some textures just to see like whether this will hold the shape of the marks that I'm making and then applying it with the brush to see what difference that makes compared to using the palette knife. It's always a good idea to label your experiments so you know what you're doing. Okay, so moving on to the next experiment, we're cleaning up our materials so we don't have any of that residual blue on the brushes. And I'm gonna try the heavy molding paste that I already had in my collection and use that with the open acrylic in alizarin and see what we get with that. You can see it already, it does tint uh, the paint. It makes it a lighter shade. It's not quite the full strength. So you do get a bit of a tint to it. You don't get that full on alizarin hue and just building that up and seeing how well this will hold the marks when it dries. And using the same approach I did with the first experiment and then of course labeling what I tried. All right, our third experiment, of course, we have to get our materials ready. And again, I'm going to use that heavy molding paste. And this time I'm switching over to the Lumiere paint and it's going to be the pearlescent paint uh, in turquoise, which of course is already sealed. So it was a brand new bottle, I have to open it up. And sometimes there is this little plastic kind of film. So getting that off. And this is a much more watery fluid paint. So this is just to see how that affects the consistency uh, and, and maintaining the peaks of the marks I'm trying to make. It's already a little bit harder to apply uh, because it does have a bit of a more fluid texture or fluid consistency. But again, repeating the same experiment with different materials. And of course, it's kind of wet, but I'm trying to label it. So that way I remember what it is that I can use that in a um, future painting if I like the effect. All right, so we've got a new substrate. Again, it's two and a half by three and a half. This time I am using some of the paints that are not too familiar to me, like the um, high flow fluorescent pink. And this experiment was actually from the insert that came with the Acrylic Ex Explorer kit. So I'm using this experiment that was in there, following the directions just to see what the properties are of these materials that I'm not familiar with and going by what the manufacturer has suggested as a way to use them. So this was the high flow fluorescent pink fluid acrylic and it's gonna dry a little. Um, so I wanna make sure that it has some dry time because I'm going to be applying another layer of paint and I didn't wanna use a palette. So now I'm using the paint directly onto my brush and this time it is the um, fluid acrylic but it is in the uh, sort of a uh, the gold the bright gold and that creates a second coating which also has to dry and so while that's drying I'm just labeling what my experiment was double checking the directions so this is supposed to be a subtractive method to making a pair and applying the open acrylic in the phthalo blue spreading that all over with the palette knife, just really layering it on. The direction said that it should be about a dime's width, the thickness of this paint application. So I'm trying to get that on there with an even coverage. 
as best as I can and carving in for the pear design. So the directions did say to use the palette knife, uh, which is not really my usual method of painting or creating work. This, this entire experiment is not my usual method, but decided to give it a go. And I'm already noticing that I don't think I let that gold layer dry enough because it's not really showing. It's coming right up as I scrape through and I'm only really seeing that fluorescent pink. Um, and then I'm using some cotton swabs and paper towels to try to remove some of that paint, subtract some of that paint for the subtractive method of creating the pear itself. And I broke off the cotton swab because I felt that the stick part of it was working much better for me than the palette knife. I do kind of like the way it's working on the pear itself. I do wish there was more gold showing through, but it's an experiment and that's how you figure out how things work. And now my hands are blue. All right, so for this one, I actually labeled it first, thinking ahead, and it is using the gel mat, the heavy gel mat. And so the, for this, I'm putting the matte medium onto the substrate first, and then I am using the fluid acrylic in the teal and applying that and trying to sort of just mix it in on the surface and just see what effect I get with that, if it levels um, or if it holds some of those peaks when it dries. And then moving on to experiment with another one of the Lumiere paints. This one is, I believe, a metallic olive green uh, and sort of doing the same type of thing of applying it. But this time I'm applying the paint first and I want to try to put the uh, matte gel on top and see if that makes a difference in terms of how the paint is affected and building the peaks um, and applying it. So just seeing how I can experiment with these different materials and using the palette knife to create textures. And then finally I'm going back to the open acrylic again in the phthalo blue and applying that gel matte and using the same approach that I did for the Lumiere paint, but this time I'm using my paintbrush and using the brush to kind of build up some textures and see what kind of marks I can make with that and if that will hold when it dries. Okay, so it has been a few days um, because the dry time on the open acrylic especially is, is pretty long. It took a few days before this blue here was not tacky to the touch. Um, so let's talk about how some of these experiments resulted and we'll start with our first one. So this was the one with the different uh, molding paste, the heavy molding paste and the light molding paste. So the blue was the light molding paste and it did keep some of the peaks and it definitely, if I were to, um, if you were to feel this, you can feel that it's a bit of a, a rough texture. So it did even keep some of the brush strokes um, in there, which is interesting. And it also did give the paint a bit of a matte effect. So it changed the, uh, the way the paint uh, handles by making it have more of a matte effect. And then we went on to the heavy molding paste, again with the open acrylic. And the heavy molding paste, as expected, did hold bigger peaks, definitely a little bit stiffer. Uh, it had the same type of thing where it did mattify the paint. The Lumiere paint, uh, as I suspected it might, uh, even with the heavy molding paste, some of it did level. And the interesting thing about the Lumiere pearlescent paint is it did maintain some of a sheen compared to the open acrylic. So it still has that sheen, which is really nice if that's an effect that you're going for. So that's sort of the way this one um, ended up with all of my experiments. The next thing that we tried was the pear that was in the Acrylic Explorer set. And um, you can see a little bit of the gold did stay. Mostly it's the fluorescent pink. Uh, my favorite thing about this is just the contrast between the wiped away area and the open and how shiny and glossy that that open is compared to the area that was wiped away. That is my favorite part about this one. And then our last one was using the heavy gel mat with the different materials. And 
uh, just seeing like how that would keep if it would level. So this was our first one where we applied the matte medium first and then painted into it. And you can see that did keep some of those strokes. So it's got some really interesting texture um, where the paint kind of separated. It's still showing the white from underneath. So I could see using this maybe as a layering effect or making a skin with an acrylic. And then the olive green, that more fluid paint, uh, definitely didn't maintain the peaks as much, but you can see that it did keep some of that texture. And it did mattify the paint. Definitely there was a more matte effect. This um, golden turquoise definitely kept more shine than the Lumiere did, the metallic. Um, and I feel like the olive lost, pretty much lost its me metallic characteristics. Here with the phthalo blue um, of the open, I kind of like that brush stroke texture that it left there and it's definitely bumpy uh, and kind of interesting. It kept the shine. It's still really shiny. That blue seems to maintain its shine, um, but you can see the difference between the blue the way it is on its own and then the blue when it's been mixed with the matte medium. It does take down that shine in comparison. And then the biggest change to that blue, that same blue, was when we added it to the molding paste that completely mattified that open acrylic. So that's an interesting comparison as well, just to see how the mediums affected things. So that is the end result of my experiments. And I can't wait to try some of these things in um, actual paintings that aren't experiments.